evening, friends. Very happy to be well, coming up and going back. So I, I thought, well, well, there, that our room would be a little short, but we're happy, you know, some of our most spiritual gatherings has been where two or three are gathered together, he said. I'm sure that most all Christians here can refer back in some manner to some time when we had just a little group, just a little cottage prayer meeting of some sort. It's where I had some of my most blessed times when the Holy Spirit would really come into our midst and, and bless us when we had little small meetings. He is made that promise that the smallest of church, two or three, gather in my name, I'll be in their midst. I wish to read a portion of scripture tonight, and we'll start and pray for the people because they're just a small group of us like this. We ought to immediately come into the realm of God's healing grace and power and make us well. He's promised to do it, and there's hardly anything that he hasn't left undone to do to reveal his will and his favor to us. So we just have to believe him. Is that right? I wish to read a portion of Scripture tonight in 23rd chapter of Exodus, beginning with the 20th verse. It's always been a very favorite spot for me. <coughs> said, Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, obey his voice, provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou wilt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then will I be an enemy to thy enemies and an adversary to thy adversaries, for my angel shall go before thee. Now, for a thought for a few moments, I wish to take that last part, or the first part of that phrase of the last verse, my angel shall go before thee. God in all ages has had someone to deal with here on earth. Ever since he's had an earth, he started, had never was a time but what he was, he had someone that he could put his hands on to send them. During this time that we're speaking of here or just read on, was when he has sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel. Now, it was not Moses that was sent. Moses was just the instrument. Now, in my heart, I have believed that God has always been the same. All through the ages and every age, He's been just as he was at the beginning. He was manifested in the fatherhood. He was manifested in the sonship. He's manifested now in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. We're living not in the Christian dispensation, but in the Holy Spirit dispensation. It's the, the acts of the Holy Spirit in the church. The church reaction to what the Holy Spirit is in them. Marvelous day we're living in. Greatest time of all ages we're now living, just at the closing of the scene of this world's activities and fixing to enter into that great age that we've all looked for so long. The Hebrew prophets have spoke of through the days. And God always has had someone he could put his hands on. Now, Moses was born a proper child, and God ordained that he should bring the Israel out under his leadership. And before he went down into Egypt, after he was called, when he was on the desert that morning herding Jethro's sheep, his father-in-law, he saw a bush a burning. Now, I believe that was the first appearance of the angel of the Lord. He was in this burning bush. And then when he commissioned Moses and told him what he was to do, he went before him down into Egypt. And when he came out, he was in a form of a fire again, a pillar of fire. 
And this pillar of fire led the children of Israel, which was the same uh, angel that was in the burning bush. That was the same pillar of fire that was in that burning bush. And that pillar of fire, or the angel, was the angel of the covenant. I believe all ministers would agree with that, that that was the angel of the covenant. If it was the angel of the covenant, then it was the Lord Jesus. It was God, the Holy Spirit. For Moses uh, chose to, to suffer the reproach of Christ and counted greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, you see, of Christ. That was Christ, the Logos, the angel of the covenant that led the children of Israel out of Egypt to the promised land, which was just a foreshadow, as he did in the natural then, he does in the spiritual today. Now, he promised to supply all their needs. When they needed water, they got it from the rock. When they needed food, God rained it down out of heaven, bloated in by the winds. And when the waters was bitter, they made it sweet. And he provided everything they had need of. When sickness came into the camp, he had an atonement made. He promised to be the God in the time of trouble, a present help. He promised to do these things and to see them through. And now, as he was then in the... So is he today. The same Spirit of God that led Israel leads the church today, bringing us through, as it was the wilderness, to the promised land. We have a promised land. You believe that. In my Father's house are many mansions. I'll go and prepare a place for you, and we'll come again and receive you unto myself. We're on our way. We're going to this glorious promised land that God has promised us. Now, along this journey, he's promised to supply everything that we have need of. Whatsoever you will ask the Father in my name, that will I do. Whatsoever things, Mark eleven twenty four. whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive it, you shall have it. Now, he gave us the strongest weapon that there is in all the world, and that's prayer. Prayer is what changes things. The Christian doesn't realize what a force he has when he kneels on his knees before Almighty God in the name of Jesus Christ. He doesn't realize what, what power that is. If the people could only realize that, the, that what is given right unto them, anything that you ask for will be given if you can appropriate the faith to believe it. For God's Word is true. And our God's Word will defeat Satan anywhere, any place, any time. Now, when Jesus is here on earth, uh, I believe he was, well, he was Emmanuel. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. So all the great qualities of the Father was in Christ Jesus, the Son, when he was here on earth. All the Father has was his. And all the fine gifts that's in God and all it was, was in Christ. But when he met Satan, he never used any of those gifts. He Just to be your example, he brought it to where the very weakest of Christian. He said, now he, he had the power right then to rebuke Satan and send him away. But what he did, he never referred to any of his power. Satan said, if thou be the Son of God, there's always a question mark across God's word by Satan. So... He said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Now, Jesus said, It is written, the Father's word. Man shall not live by bread alone. He took him up on top of the, the temple and uh, said, uh, told him to cast himself down. Jesus said, It is written, right back to the Scripture. Then he took him up on a mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world, and said, I'll give them to you if you'll bow down and worship me. Jesus said, It is written. See, constantly, it is written. It is written. And then when you can hit Satan with the Scripture, he's just as powerless as he can be. Okay? With anything, I don't care what it is. Now, it isn't within me or your pastor to pray. It's for us to pray with you, but it'll have to be your own individual faith that does the healing. Now, the only... Jesus never healed anyone without first the Father showed him about it. Now, he said that if we had it last night in John, the fifth chapter, 
and the 19th verse. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself but what he sees the Father doing. Watch two blind men follow him one day in the streets. They were blind, crying, have mercy on us, have mercy on us. He just walked right on. He came into the house, and they brought the blind man to him. And the blind man said, have mercy on us. He said, do you believe? He said, yes. He touched their eyes, said, according to your faith. That right? Yes. Acor- according to your faith, be it unto you. See? And they had the faith. The woman touched the hem of his garment. He said, thy faith, not my power, thy faith has made thee whole. See? See? Thy faith. Uh, see? what? But he went and did just what the Father showed him. Now, his spirit is with us today. It reveals it, what the Father shows. It's already done. Your prayer, for instance, out there, be praying. You be uh, sitting out there praying. And what the Father would decide and your faith would move up into a bracket and say, yes, I believe it right now. I accept it right now. I believe it right now. Now the Father could turn right around to me and say, tell him. I heard him and he had a certain thing and it's over. See? But I couldn't do that myself. I could only say it was over if he had tell me it was over. See? <coughs> See what I mean? Now that shows he's the same yesterday to them. I can pray for you, and according to your faith, be it unto you. But if he tells me something to tell you, I can take a message through a divine gift there and tell you what he said. Just like in different people, you've heard the testimonies. I try not to get the testimonies because Mr. Baxter gets to them sometimes. I get right back on the same one. Many of you have heard the thousands of testimonies around the world of what he's did. Great man, Congressman Upshaw, and them, and different ones, and Florence Nightingale. And then when they were healed, you see, he would speak and say a certain thing. And I, I, no matter what it is, it'll be that way every time. Now, you take it anywhere you want to, and any person's at liberty... That any time that they ever heard it say, Thus saith the Lord, or in the name of the Lord, or a certain thing would take place, it'll be just that way. See? Or you can trace back any of my footsteps across the nations and see if it ever one time ever spoke, Thus saith the Lord, and predicted something, but what didn't come just exactly that way. It's never failed. The first time it happened, of course, I was just a small baby. I was just three minutes old about when it came in. But down through life, every time, even before I was converted, gifts and callings are without repentance. You know that. That's where I think of many of the... And see, I'm new in the Pentecostal church. I've come from the Baptist church. And then the Baptist people couldn't see that there was a divine gift. The Pentecostal people believed it. So that's where God sent me. That's where I feel at home. I'm one of you. See, because I've received the Holy Ghost, and then God made the thing manifest to me, and I started off. But from the, the part itself has been since a baby, gifts and callings are without repentance. you believe in that? If you believe the Scripture, Jesus Christ was foreordained, the Son of God. He is a woman's seed that was the bruise of the serpent's head, plumb in the Garden of Eden. you believe that? Yes. Moses couldn't help. He was Moses. He was born a proper child. They seen he was and knowed he was. And God raised him right up under Pharaoh's nose, didn't he? Is that right? He couldn't help it. John the Baptist, 712 years before he was born, he was the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Is that right? Jeremiah the prophet... God said, before you was even formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and sanctified you and ordained you a prophet over the nations. Is that right? That's right. Before he ever come from his mother's womb. See, gifts and callings are without repentance. See, God gives them. You can't help because you've got blue eyes. All who have taken thought can add one cubic to his statue. There's where the thing has got out into the world today with a bunch of ism, you see. And it absolutely, it's nothing but a work of Satan to try to take away from the real thing of God. And that's what you Pentecostal people and what all people, Baptists and so forth, has had down through the age is somebody trying to impersonate something that they know nothing about. It'd be better to keep still. Who taken thought can add one cubic to his statue? If God wants you to be a certain thing, he brings you to this earth to be that and you'll be it. See? If he called you to be a, do a thing like a man said, well, I believe I can make more money if I was a preacher. You'll never make a preacher. <laughs> God has to call you to be a preacher. How can a preacher preach less... The Lord has sent him. Is that right? It's all in God. Everything moves right back into God. Is that right? Everything right back to him. He sets the program. 
We just fall in line, and see, and carry it out. Now, a few years ago, it was firmly not believed by any peoples that there's any other light besides the sunlight. Critics in the scientific world once laughed and said, didn't God make an awful mistake when he wrote the Bible? Said he said he made the created the firmament before he made the sun. Said the very idea, there's no such a thing as any light outside of sunlight. And he made the firmament before he made the sun. And how the apostle said, your whole body's full of light. Well, science looked down with the spirit of meekness and consideration and dug into it and proved that God was right. Now, there's plenty of light besides uh, the sunlight. For instance, the x-ray. That's not, it has no sun to do with it. But your whole body, each little cell, little atom is a light. You're made up full of light. They find out that the Bible's right, that you're made full of light. Because scientists, not looking at it from a natural standpoint, you can't understand it. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. So, but they proved that the Bible was right. And not long ago, there was a man who really believed that there, that electricity could be harnessed. He got him a kite, and he fished with a key on the end of the tail of it. But he finally captured what he thought, what he believed was right, because people laughed at him. But he, in his heart, there was something in there that told him that it was right. So he stayed right with it. A little later on, Thomas Edison. The man who gave us electric in the land. He believed that that electronic or electrolysy would carry over a wire. 10,000 wires, I guess he used. He used this kind of a metal. It wouldn't work. Set at nighttime, a cup of coffee and a sandwich, and tireless as he could be. But yet, down in his heart, something told him that he could make that electricity heat a wire that would light. Well, now, he didn't just give up on the first little wire. He just laid it aside and tried another one. But we... Not we. We were in contact with the spiritual realm of God. We, well, I was prayed for and it didn't get me healed, so I guess there's nothing to it. Oh, what a poor crow bait you make for God. See? Look, no, sir. God wants somebody who will not give up. Amen. A winner never quits and a quitter never wins. Right. You've got to stay and call, call things right before Satan. Tell him it's this way. Thus saith the Lord. The Lord has said so. And that's, it is written. It's written. No matter what he says, it's written. Right there. Well, Brother Bram never got to touch me. It is written. Brother Bram never done no healing. God done your healing. It's already dead. It's written. Whatever I ask and believe God, I shall receive it. It's mine. It's my personal property. Then Edison, hour after hour, something in his heart. They never had no electricity before. But, uh, to light a light. But Edison believed that it would do it. And finally, he conquered it. Because something in his heart said it'll do it. And as long as there's something in here saying it'll do it, there's got to be something out there to respond to that. That's right. What would your great-grandfather said when he talked to the neighbor about a television, a wave vibrating through the air like that would even make the picture? Why, he'd have said he's mentally upset. But somebody believed that there was an air wave. And he couldn't explain it. God had it here. Now, how did he think of being an air wave? We've got it. We've got television, haven't we? Sure, we have radio and so forth. How was it? Because something down in the human heart said it's there. And it broke into that realm and picked it up and brought it out here and gave it to the world. Now, brother, sister, you can call a fanatic if you want to. But I know that there is a power of God. First thing, because God said so. Second thing, because in my heart, there's something in there that says that there's a power of God to heal every sickness. I believe it. And as long as I believe that, I'll spend my life, see, that I know that it's the truth. It's God's Word first, and there's something in my heart telling me it's there. And I'm searching every wire, everywhere, trying to find a place that we could get it into the church. Fanatics may rise and go, but God, you'll see the day. That the church of Jesus Christ will stand to its feet with this great power that they're laughing at us about today. It'll be brought forth just like electricity was. Because there's something down in the human heart that says it's there. See? It's the same angel of God. Now look. David said, when the deep calleth to the deep. If there's a deep calling to a deep, there's got to be a deep to respond to that call. Here, as I've often used the illustration. 
before a fin was on a fish's back, there had to be a water first for him to swim in or he wouldn't have no fin. Is that right? Before there was a tree, a flower to bloom in the earth, there had to be an earth first for to, the flower to set in or there'd have been no flower. Is that right? Now, here not some time ago, I read where a little baby had uh, Brother Baxter was telling me one the other day that a little baby kept craving salt, salt, salt. And they'd taken the salt away from the baby and wouldn't let him have it. The baby died. They held a postmortem. And come to find out there was something in the baby's body that had to have that salt. And they put it in there and it just dissolved the salt up. See, if they give the baby salt, if here I read where the little baby eat the erasers off of pencils, they eat the pedal off of a bicycle. Well, they want to they give the little boy an examination and come to find out that his little body needed sulfur. They sulfur in rubber. See, there's a sulfur, something in here calling for sulfur. He's going to nibble till he finds it somewhere. And as sure as there's something in here calling for sulfur, there's got to be a sulfur to respond to that call. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Deep calling to the deep. Now, as long as there's something down in our heart, how many here believes in divine healing? Yes. All right. As sure, look, be, as sure as there is a call down in there, a desire to be healed of God by divine healing, there's got to be a fountain open somewhere. Yes. See? For, for that creation can be in there, that creation to make you desire that, there has to be a creator to create that creation. Is that right? Yeah. Well, there's got to be a God then somewhere that's putting that desire in your heart to desire that. And if he has put that desire there, then there's got to be something out there to fulfill that desire that you've got. Do you see? Amen. The deep calling to the deep. And somewhere out here, someday, you'll find out, and we're all going to see it, God's going to have a church that's going to break into that yonder. Brother, and all them marvelous things that once belonged into the church of the living God that's been thrown aside is going to stand on his feet someday and take a journey up through the sky. Oh, I've seen that for years, my brother and sister, and tonight I believe it's the same Holy Spirit that led the children of Israel to lead us up into that water yonder somewhere. People can't understand it, but it's there. As long as the human heart calls for it, there's got to be something there to respond to it. The deep calls to the deep. I'll send my angel before you to lead you into the way. The trouble of it is we try to get ahead of the angel. Let the angel lead the way. And he'll lead us to the fountains of the water of life and give it to us freely. Do you believe it? Now we bow our heads. Lord Jesus, tonight, just here we're thankful for this little church. We thank you for its pastor and for its teachers and for its pupils. And we thank you for every minister and his congregation, the parts of them that's gathered in here tonight. Some of them out in other rooms. We thank thee for them. But above all things, we thank thee for Jesus Christ who has drawn us together by his mercy, by his merits. We thank thee, Father, with a true, sincere heart. Now I pray that you'll be with us tonight. Help us and bless us. And as my heart and other hearts here blending together, calling for the deep, the deep, there are men and women sitting here that your children, that's afflicted by the enemy. As our brother Baxter, the, your teacher just a while ago, standing there on the steps listening at him, hearing him speaking, casting out evil spirits. How we thank thee, Lord, that thy word teaches that. In my name they shall cast out devils. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. You've promised it, God. Now, Father, we pray that you'll just pull back the curtain tonight. Just open up them circles and dimensions yonder, Lord, to us. That the great Holy Spirit might fill every heart with faith tonight. And we might go out of this building tonight without a feeble one in the midst of us. May we go out rejoicing, happy, healed, filled with the Spirit. And may there be an old-fashioned revival start here in the city, Lord, that will sweep citywide. Grant it, Father, and many be saved, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen.
see, it's kind of a hard thing, friends, for us to determine how praying for the sick. Brother Baxter, I guess you'd explain that to them, how that we have to give out cards in order to keep an orderly line. We try to say, well, now let these, just so many here come, or go back there and get so many there. It's, uh uh-huh, there you are, you got to respect. So we just give everybody cards, and there we just start along through them somewhere and call them out. Now, I believe you said you give out from 50 to 100 in the, what? From 1 to 100 in the H. Well, let's start, take 50, 60, how many can we line up here, about 10? Sir? All right, let's try 15 then. All right, we'll take uh, H, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, on up 50, 55, 60, 65, about first 15. And we begin H, 50. Who's got H, 50? Prayer card, H, 50. 51, 52. 53, 54, that's right, line right up here. Just come right down on this side, if you will, and line up. And, um, well, you may not be able to get to uh, all of them. We'll do as best we can. And now, I want each and every one of you to be deeply and sincerely in prayer. Will you do that? All right, while they're coming, <clears throat> I see a, a young man sitting here before me. He's very badly afflicted. I wish God would heal the man or give something to us, some revelation. While I'm here, I'd like to see. I've seen worse than that, though, our Lord has did. Now, the boy probably has been prayed for several times. That I don't know. But if... God would just speak and tell me something to tell him. You pray that he will, will you? I, I hope that he will. I seen the boy last night. My heart went out for him. And I, now, he might tell me that it's what purpose, what's the reason, what caused it, what will do it. I don't know. See, that's up to God. I, I just have to do as he tells me to do. He might tell him he's made well. If he is, that, that settles it. If he tells him he'll never be well, it'll, it'll never be. It'll just be just as he says. See, I couldn't... But I don't know. I'm just watching the boy, keep my eye on him, and I do on everyone. Now, the angel of the Lord. How many has ever seen a picture of it? Let's see your hands. On that picture, that halo of light, like I was taking down there. Many of you have. I believe we have some of them left. And we are... All right, 50 to 65. Turn your prayer cards over, friends. Look on the back of it. You'll find there's enough 50 to 65. If you will, there's not, there's not, they're not all lined up. 50 to 65, if you'll um, line up here, we'll try our best to do what we can. 50 to 65, is that H? H50. Was it H50? All right. All right. And now, the rest of you, just hold your card. Now, maybe if we can get through this number here, maybe we can call another number and we'll take a little farther up in them, like that. Just around. We we'll always try to... See that everybody's under the place while we're praying so that everybody can be prayed for. And now, um, but we look on your cards. Now, you count them, Brother Baxter, as you see. And if there's, a, and if there's somebody, maybe it's deaf or something and w- wouldn't come, you just look around on somebody's card. It's, a, um, it's about, it's a, just about sitting next to you or something. And um, now the people coming up here is no assurance... Okay. All right. If the people that's coming up here is no assurance that these people's going to be healed, not a thing. They're just simply standing here. So. But the only assurance there is is how much faith you have in God. Your faith is what does it. Now, I want each one of you that's in in these aisles tonight to settle down, be quiet, and pray. And I want you to, to pray with the deepest of sincerity. I want you to pray believing that God will reveal and will heal you where you're sitting or standing or back in here, wherever you are. Just believe. That's all I ask you to do. Just have faith in God. I, I'm, I'm your brother. And I'm just here for one purpose. And, and that's to help you. And the only way I can help you is to get you to see what Jesus Christ has already done for you. 
Now, before we start to pray, let me say this to this audience back there, everyone. My brother and sister, Jesus Christ has already healed every person that's here that's sick. Every person here that's sick tonight, you're already healed. And every sinner that's in the building, if you're here, your sins are already forgiven you. The only thing you have to do is to accept what has been done. And then when you accept Him, you accept Him as your Savior. But He doesn't come down and die afresh for you. He just, you just accept what He has done. And through that, you are saved. Is that right? And the same thing by healing. I'll be that right for the back. And, uh, and brethren, I believe that is truth, isn't it? Yes, it's already the work. Jesus Christ finished the work and paid the price of complete redemption at Calvary when he died. Now we just have to look up there and believe it. Whatever you ask, believe you receive it. That's it. Now have faith. And the only thing that... Now here's these ministers here, back here behind me. And my own uh, manager here, Brother Baxter. Now, they could explain the word probably where I couldn't even touch it. There, God has called them for that. They, and if you'll just believe what they're telling you, that's what does it. It'll do just exactly the same as God's word. Now, after that, the love of God has sent gifts into the church. Now, I believe in tonight that the Holy Spirit could speak to a certain person through unknown tongues and another one out there could give the interpretation and tell just exactly to uh, this person here or somebody else just what to do, just what the trouble and what's it. Don't you believe that? Yeah. Well, that's the divine gift that's in the church. Now, but if he says that, it'll be just exactly that way if it's the Holy Spirit. It'll be just exactly the way he said it. That's a gift. Then he sent first, he sent prophets, teachers, evangelists. And is that right? Gifts of tongue, interpretation. It's all for the edifying of the church. Is that right? All for to edify the church. God has set them in the church. Who has? Not because somebody laid hands on you, but because God has. Not man has. God has set in church. He gives. All right. Bring the lead. Now, these people coming are perfect strangers. And now, I want you, everyone tonight, to do this for me because I just have... See, I'm waiting a call to Africa. And that might be any time. And I don't know just how many nights my, we can stay at any place because he might, my life is given to him. He could call me in 10 minutes now and send me to Australia. I'd take out. See, just for a second. And while we're here, I want you to get all the superstitions away from you. Settle everything down. And make yourself subject to the Holy Spirit that God can move through you and you'll get the benefit of God's blessings for you. That's what I've come to you. I've moved down like this and saying, now God, you help me and let the people all believe and so I can minister to them. And when I leave the city, the glory of God will be everywhere and the people will be praising our dear Lord Jesus whom we dearly love with all of our heart and working for His vineyard. Now in the divine... Spirit, a province of God, is this, this gift of seeing and foreknowing and knowing what was and what will be. That's nothing to heal. It's only to edify Jesus Christ to bring His Word back, saying, The things that I did, shall you also. What the Father would show. Now, I believe this lady standing here, uh, I do not know you do, a lady. I've never seen you as far as I know of. We're perfect strangers. Never seen you in my life. And, well, if I don't know you, and probably you uh, raised hundreds and hundreds of miles down here from me, then, and then when I come down here to, to talk to you, well, me raised up in Indiana, probably you down in Florida. Well, then when we come together to talk to one another, we've been miles apart, but God's known you since before you were born. And He's known me since before I was born. And now, I, I believe you're a Christian. I, I, because your spirit seems to be welcome. You see, it just when a, when a Christian comes, it's just something that just says welcome. See? And I, I get that right away. It's a Holy Spirit. But now, if me knowing nothing of you and miles apart, all of our life, the Holy Spirit would have to would do something that would make you know that the presence of His being is here. 
and, and make you have more confidence that I've told the truth. Now, I want you to get close. I just, of course, you know what I'm doing now. I'm just contacting your spirit, see. But, uh, uh, and talking to you, I want you to believe this, see, that God knows all things. And what it's trying to do is to get you in condition to receive him as your healer. See? Just something to stimulate the faith that's, that's in you. Because being a Christian, it's there, but it may be laying dormant. See? And now just to talk to you and for a few moments to kind of being the first patient, it's always just a, a light First, to take time to the patient till I know that his presence there. Then I just start praying for the people because they'll, if they'll halfway believe, they'll get a blessing. You see, if they they'll just believe it. But the angel of the law that Brother Baxter was telling about tonight, and his presence now. If if he be standing near here, then he will. He knows you, and he knows me. And then if there's something wrong with you, some sickness, then that absolutely, as you listen to the afternoon services and so forth, that is a demon. All sickness is of the devil. You can't pin that on God. It's of the devil. Well, then if, uh, if that be a spirit, now both of us here are spirits. It's the same as we're natural, we're supernatural. And then, if you be a Christian woman, and me a Christian man, and then in you is a something, a, a spirit of sickness, and then God has sent me as your brother. See? And I talk to you, and I tell you that he told me to go pray for the people. Now that's all said. If you'll get the people to believe you, be sincere when you pray, nothing will stand before the prayer. Now that's the thing, be sincere when I pray. And get the people to believe well, I question I was my illiteracy. I, was, I had grammar school education. It's the seventh grade. How would I get the people to believe me? He said, as Moses was given two signs of a vindication and began to speak, you know how the story goes of it. Now, do you believe that that's the truth? Now, if he will reveal to me what is wrong with you or something or other about your life that you know what I know nothing about, then you believe that that's a true sign that God sent me here to pray for you. Is that right? All right, I just want you to look, look, just keep looking to me and believing. I'll tell you, Christian friends, it's a, quite a problem, see. you got spirit all around you. In my, in my auditorium meetings, I never have no one behind me, see. No one around like that, or no one but out this one way so I can keep my back this way to look the patient straight. But see, there's sick people sitting back in there. It's just as soon as I, this woman, just as soon as it starts coming in, it's moving from everywhere. You see, you have to watch, you'll get tangled up. See, it, but it has to break, tangle down to the beach to know. And see, there's people sitting there, sick. Here, sick. Here, here. Back around here and all around. Stand in front of them. But I pray that God will be merciful. You, uh, you're, yeah, you're suffering with a, there's something wrong. It's a, It's, it's, it's cancer. Is that right? Isn't that right? You just had an examination of that. And wasn't that on the breast? Is that right? Now, let's see if I'm right. It wasn't on the left breast. Is that right? I've seen the doctor when he was moving that thing around over you. That kind of tall fellow was looking down. Is that right? Say, you do, you're not from Florida. You're from New York. Is that right? Is that true? All right, I've seen you around a lake or something other up in their place. Is that true? I know the country. Come here just a minute. You believe that's the truth? That God sent me for you to be well. Oh, God, have mercy. I pray that you'll be kind to this poor little woman and will heal her and will make her well. And now, as your servant, knowing that she, if you don't touch her, Lord, in some way, she can't stay on the earth much longer. Lord, we need her. We need her Her here. She's our sister. And I pray sincerely now that her faith will mount up. Way up. On and above. All sickness. Above all doubts. Surmount coming to the glory of God. And from this very hour, may she start mending and get well. I say, curse it to the cancer. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, may it leave her body and may she go home a well woman. Serve God. To Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, sister. Are you going to get well? You believe with all your life? Oh, God bless you. Praise God. I accept my healing. Uh, your little baby? Well, he's a fine little... See, he's got a breaking out on his face. Well, that's too bad. And I don't... That, that ain't bothering me. That's all right. That's right. If he was... I imagine at the kind of eczema on his face. Is that right? Do you believe what prefer to be the truth? You do that. Your baby has something else, too, does it? Is that right? Say, so you're suffering, too. You have some kind of a choking spirit. I, I believe it's an inner garter or something. Is that right? Say another thing. You need Jesus Christ as your Savior. Isn't that right? You're not a Christian. You want to become a Christian now? Raise up your hand and signify to people. You want to be a Christian. Almighty God, this poor young mother standing here holding her baby. And we are taught that all things are working together for good. God heal her. Take away the garter off of her throat. Take it away, Lord, and heal this darling little baby. Save her soul from a life of sin. May she go home tonight rejoicing, happy, and may they both get well and serve you all the days of your life. As she's accepted you now before this audience, you said, if you will testify me before man, I'll proclaim you before the Father. We thank thee, Lord, that thou hast taken her and has saved her and has healed her. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you, sister. You are my sister now. Your sins are forgiven. You're healed. The baby's going to be all right. Go in peace and God be with you. All right. Come Have you believed? Why not be healed? No matter what would come, what would go, God has now vindicated himself. He's sure present. Who is these people? There's been two or three come by. I never seen them in my life. I know nothing about them. Never heard of them or seen them in my life. And you have to admit that there's something here. You'll have to admit it's in the supernatural realm. Now believe. It's the Spirit of Jesus Christ. The same one that knew where some mules were tied. The same one that said to Philip when he came with Nathaniel, he said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no God. He said, Well, when did you know me? He said, Before Philip called you when you were under the tree. Well, he never tried to say, Now, the Jew said, Oh, he's just a good fortune teller, Beelzebub. But Philip said, Thou art the Son of God, the King of Israel. We know that no man could do these things except God be with him. Well, now, if you're in here not a full gospel people and you've got a little superstition about you, get it out of your way. These people are not crazy. they got the Spirit of God upon them. They're foolish to the world, but it's the Spirit of God moving right into them. I was once in your condition, but God moved me in with people who believe. Now, get away from that doubting and things you've got in your heart and believe, and you shall also receive and be glory, have glory of God. Here's a woman standing by me. It's the Spirit of God here. I don't know the lady. I've never seen her in my life. But you're a Christian. Isn't that right? Filled with the Holy Spirit. Was really excited the time when it happened. Is that right? And you're suffering now with a tuberculosis condition. And that's in the bowels. Is that right? Is that the same Christ that was that? Now the Lord Jesus healed you, lady. Faith in God. Believe Him and He'll bring it to pass. Come, sir. Do you believe? Only thing you have to do is have faith. Believe God and God shall bring it to pass. Somebody's praying. Oh, what the Holy Spirit could do this just this minute. What he could do if people would just let him. 
You're trying to get healed right there. You're looking at me just trying your best to pray to get healed. I, I couldn't heal you, my brother, but you look at me and I can tell you what's wrong with you. I'll ask you this. You sitting there a stranger to me. If God will reveal to me what's wrong with you, will you accept your healing? You will? You have a rupture. Is that right? Or stand up and accept your healing then. Get well. All right. Do you believe me to be a servant, brother? I believe you believe that. I do. Yes, sir. And and only God, only God alone. I've never seen you in my life. But there's a, the Holy Spirit here now. The, the one who I, I know what I know who I know who I have believed. And I know that he told me. And I believe every word that he said. Say, by the way, I see a pulpit stand between me and you. You're a minister of the gospel. That's right. Is that right? That's right. And don't you have something wrong with your throat? That's right. Is that, is that right? Raise up your hand. That's right. All right. Almighty God, heal this your servant. And may this leading me go away from him tonight. And may it not bother him anymore. May it go in the name of Jesus Christ. And may he preach the gospel for him. You believe with all your heart? Have faith in God. Don't doubt. Just believe. You in the line there. You wouldn't have to come in the line if you just believe. You out there, you won't have to come in no line if you just believe. Have faith. I seen a poor that man go just prayed for just then. Back there. I seen a pulpit of lying in here just a few minutes ago, but there's a woman standing behind it. Oh, it's, aren't you a lady minister there? Has something wrong with your lung, don't you, sister? Isn't there a lung trouble or something in that? Wrong with your lung? Is that right? Do you believe with all your heart God will make you well? All right, stand up and accept your healing then. In the name of the Lord Jesus. All right, come. Lady, do you believe? With all your heart, if I be God's servant, then God is here. Is that right? That's right. If I wasn't telling the truth, God would never testify of a thing. Is that right? That's right. God only testifies of His gifts. That's right. If I proclaim that and it's wrong, then God never sent me. If I tell it's the truth, you have a right to doubt me, but not God. Then it's God now. It isn't me no more now. I was just testifying a while ago, but now He's testifying. You want to get over those kidney stones? You do? All right, then go and may the Lord Jesus make you well and heal you. In Jesus Christ's name, may it go right. Let's say praise be to God. All right. You believe. Do I like to feel that heart beating right again? Would you? Raise up your hand, he'll do it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may he go and be healed. In Jesus' name. Amen. I go believing. Go believing. Thanking God for his goodness and mercy. All right. Come, lady. You'd also like to get over our trouble, wouldn't you, yes, sister? Sir. You raise up your hand and say, I accept it right now. In the name of the Lord. Amen. All right. Come. <laughs> this happens to be you have a female trouble and also a heart trouble. Isn't that right? Raise up your hand and say, I thank God for my healing. Go on. Up this that it left you just then, lady. If you'll just keep believing, you'll always be over. God bless you. Have faith. All right, sister, you believe me to be God's prophet? Standing between you and I is a table. You're moving back from it. From that table because you have a stomach trouble. It's a peptic ulcer in the stomach. Is that right? All right. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll heal her. May she go from here tonight and be made well in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go accept it. Now believe it. Praising God. You each want to be healed if you just believe.
start getting real nervous. Isn't that right? You're all tore up. You're in the menopause. It's because you have a stomach condition that you can't eat things. Is that right? Raise up your hands down. Heal. of the Lord Jesus, may you go and be healed and made whole through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Let's say praise be to God. Uh, now the presence of the Lord is here to heal. The waters is trouble. Now is the time to step in. This is the truth. God is vindicating the truth. Why can't you at this time? You feel different, don't you? <laughs> That's right. All right. Lady, you sitting in the chair there. Look here, you don't have to come up here. Do you believe? You believe me to be his prophet? Then if it's so, you don't have to be standing here. I can tell you sitting there. Is that right? You have female trouble. Is that right? It's an abscess on the over. Raise up your hand. If you ain't got female trouble, raise up your hand. Is that right? I turn around going back offline and get well. Let's say praise be to God. Don't you believe he'll heal you right now if you'd accept it? 